Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your pal Impossible. I'm here, and I got a special episode for you guys today. Besiege just released 1.0 uh, for the... It took like five years to get here, and uh, it's got a whole bunch of new blocks for us to learn about, and I thought I'd do a tutorial for you guys, because I love this game, and I am so excited about this update, so let's get right into it. So I'm going to have uh, links for you down below for every single piece for you guys to jump forward to whatever you're interested in learning about. I will go over each piece, tell you guys exactly what it does, and I'll even give you a little example here uh, of how they work. So uh, let's hop right into it. The first one here is the timer block. And this one, basically, you have a set amount of time. So this one, I have it set to wait for three seconds. And after three seconds, it's going to hold down the L key for five seconds. All right. And I set it to automatic. Otherwise, you can hit a hit a button to, to get it started. Or you can set it to loop. Automatic just means it starts right off the bat. You don't have to do anything. OK, that's all that means. So right here, this is going to go off. And after three seconds, it's going to hit the button, which causes this steering thing to come down and hit the bomb. It's a very simple machine just to give you an idea of what's going on. So let's get it started here. All right. The timer is going. You can see it twirling there. And there we go. All right, that one was easy enough, so let's uh, hop right on to the next one. All right, guys, now we're going to check out the sensor block, which you can see right here. It uh, projects this little beam here, and if anything goes through that, it's going to read as positive, and if it's positive, it's going to press this button. You can set this button anything you want. I just so happen to have it Y to shoot here. So if anything goes through this beam, it's going to shoot. That's how it works. You can make it longer, shorter... You can make it fatter, you know, whatever. Anything goes through there, it's going to shoot. That's how it works. So let's just get it started here. It's not shooting. I go forward. Surprise, it shoots. I go back. It stops shooting. Go forward, it starts shooting. And just, it's as simple as that. It's very easy block to understand. Let's go on and move forward. All right, guys. Now we're on the altimeter block. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated. In the inverted way, uh, basically, when it's inverted, it'll keep hitting whatever the emulate button is until it reaches the desired height. So this, I'm going to show you guys its inverted state right now. So right now, it's going to keep pressing the button until it's 11 distance. And then the button obviously is just moving these. And then it lets go. And it's just going to keep doing this over and over and over again. That is all it does. Now, if we take it off inverted like this, it's not going to do anything at all until you hit the button. And then once it hits 12, it's going to keep going and it'll probably never stop. So let's, I'm not, I'm going to hit the button right now. See, it's going. And now I'm no longer touching it. It's doing it. It's on its own, uh, you know, hit a certain length and it's just going to go on for all eternity here. All right. So that is the altimeter. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, this is the first logic block. This is the important bit right here. You get to pick what kind of block it is right here. What kind of logic is it running? And I will go through what every single one of these does uh, as we go through all the different blocks. Uh, right now, each one of these sensors, which is there and there, these are just sensor blocks uh, inputting I and O if they get triggered. And basically, this is an OR gate, which means if any of these gets triggered, Either, either this one gets triggered or this one gets triggered. They're both going to fire. That is how it goes. All right. So let's just go ahead and get this going here. So it's getting triggered like that. It stop, should be stopped getting triggered. Now it's getting triggered again. So either one gets triggered. They both go. That is quite simply all there is to the logic block here. As you can see, it takes either I or O for this one to be positive. And uh, it'll just hit the T button, which was firing these uh, flamethrowers. That is all there is to the logic gate in OR mode. Now let's move on. All right, guys, here we are. This time we are going to do the NOR logic gate. Uh, this, these are just sensors with I and O, like I always do. Uh, and basically, the NOR gate only goes if neither of the triggers are switched. So right now, as it starts up, nothing will happen. All right? They're both being triggered because there's sensors looking directly at those walls that's stopping it. Now, if, as soon as we move one, hold on, actually, sorry, neither of them can be triggered. So if we move both of them, it's good. If, as soon as one of them gets triggered, 
no longer works. All right. That is how a NOR gate works. It only it only activates if it is not triggered by either input. So there we go. That is the NOR gate. Let's uh, go ahead and move on. Okay, guys, this time we are doing the NAND gate. And the NAND gate is a bit tricky. Basically, it's the opposite of an AND gate. Basically, it triggers as long as both of the triggers are not triggered. Or <laughs> It's true as long as both of these in are not setting true inputs. Okay? So, uh, well, as you'll see here, nothing is in the sensor. It's going fine. One sensor is triggered. It's still going fine. Oop, let me go back here In here. Now both sensors are triggered and it finally turns off. So basically it act it stays activated until both triggers are triggered. That is how a NAND gate works. All right, I hope I was clear enough for you guys. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, this next uh, logic gate mode is XOR, which means it'll only activate if only, only one of the triggers is activated. So if they're both activated, it won't activate the actual main logic gate, all right? That is how this goes. Only one of these can be activated for it to go off. So let me go ahead and show you guys how this is going to work. So none of them are activated right now. I move this guy forward right here. Only one is activated, so it goes. Now I move this guy forward. All of a sudden, they're both activated. It turns off. I move this guy away. Well, it satisfies the condition again, and it's activated again. That is how the XOR uh, gate works. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, guys, now we're up to the XNOR gate. So basically how this one works, it only activates if both of its inputs are the same. So both of these sensors are showing up as, as null, then it'll activate. If both of them are showing up as true, it, it'll activate as well. So let's go ahead and see this one in action. All right, so they're both uh, none right now, so it's activating. I move this one on the left forward, and it stops, because they're not the same anymore. I move this one up here, they're the same again. I move this guy back, oh, they're not the same anymore. That is how it goes. It just makes sure that both inputs have to be the same for it to be activated. Let's continue on. Okay, guys, now we're on the NOT gate, and the NOT gate is pretty simple. It basically takes whatever input it's getting and flips it. So if it's getting positive, he switches it, it switches it to negative. If it's getting negative, it switches it to positive. So right now it is set to emulate Y. So when it is positive, it'll shoot this thing off. And it's not, it'll uh, you know won't do anything. And this is a sensor right here. It's uh, you know it's emulating I. So let's see how this one goes. All right. So right now it's 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 you know flipping the negative. Nothing is getting input. So it's flipping it and something. So it's shooting it out. And let me just move this guy forward here. All of a sudden, it's in the sensor, and it's shut it off. So now that the sensor is positive, the logic gate is flipping it and turning the gun off. All right? So so this is kind of a cool little mechanic you could use to uh, keep yourself from doing friendly fire or something. All right, let's move on to the last gate. All right, guys, we're on the last gate here. This is the AND gate. As you can see, we have our sensors here. And uh, the AND gate works. Basically, both of them have to be positive for it to be true and for these guns to shoot off. If they're not both being triggered, it won't do anything. That is how the AND gate works. So let's go ahead and see this in action. All right, so nothing is being triggered, nothing happens. We move this forward, it's being triggered, but only one of them is being triggered, so it's still not gonna go through. Oop, let's move it back. Sorry, I forgot my commands here. All right, now they're both being triggered and it finally works. Now let's move this one out. Oh, not being triggered anymore. Shuts off. Now they're both being triggered and it works. That is how the AND gate works. And that'll wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial here. I hope you guys are willing to stick around here. Maybe you're willing to hit that subscribe button if this was helpful. Click that like button. It'd help a whole lot. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.